Hey folks, I'm Lucy at Ballyhoo Creations and I'm going to talk to you about tips and tricks for applique on your embroidery machine. And a lot of these tips and tricks are also going to apply to machine applique on a sewing machine, so you might want to watch it for that too. But I'm mainly going to focus on embroidery machine applique because a lot of you have requested and are having issues with ragged edges on your applique or maybe it doesn't look good after you wash it. So we're going to cover all of that. We're definitely going to talk about scissors because that's an extremely important important part of a good applique. We're also going to talk a little bit about fabrics and stabilizers and what to do and what not to do. But first, let's talk about the basics of how you do applique on your embroidery machine. Starting with the basics of applique, what you do first is you do a placement stitch onto whatever you're going to applique on. So it's your shirt, your towel, your whatever. And then after the placement stitch, which is just an outline, you then lay the fabric down on top of those placement stitches. Then you do a tack down and that attaches your applique fabric to your backing. Then you cut away the excess fabric from your shape and put it back on the machine to do a border stitch. Usually that border stitch is a satin stitch, but it can be other things too, just depending on the style of the digitizer. Tip number one, stabilize properly make sure that you're using the right stabilizer under whatever it is you're doing. So if you're doing a stretchy t-shirt, you need to use a cutaway stabilizer underneath that, not a tearaway because it can pull apart and it's just not gonna hold up well. So stabilize your clothing, your towel, your fabric with whatever you would normally do if you were just doing regular embroidery. Stabilize properly. Also consider the size of your applique. This was a very large applique on a very lightweight fabric, so that's also going to cause your fabric to distort. Whereas I used a smaller version of this applique mod, mid-century modern cat. This is one of my designs. I'll leave a link in the description. And this is on a sweatshirt, so it's much more substantial to hold up a smaller amount of fabric, and this one's going to hold up much better. I like this kitty. You have to consider all of those design decisions when you're actually doing any embroidery project, but especially with applique, you might think you're just slapping some fabric on there and it doesn't really matter, but you do need to have a fabric that's strong enough to hold the fabric that you're adding on to it. You're adding more weight and you need to make sure that your fabric can handle that. Most of them can, but the really lightweight stuff, maybe not so much. Tip number two, pre-wash. Pre-wash your fabric for applique, pre-wash your garment or towel or whatever you're using, and some people even pre-wash their stabilizer. I don't do that. I haven't had a problem with my stabilizer shrinking, but if yours is, then consider that. Here is an example of an applique that I did not pre-wash the fabric and I did not stabilize properly. This is just a no-show mesh stabilizer that was used on a very, very thin knit fabric. So it needed to have a, like a medium weight cutaway behind it and I needed to pre-wash both fabrics and I didn't on this fabric. So pre-wash your fabrics, big deal. Tip number three, use something fusible on your applique fabric. I've already ironed some on to the, some pieces here. I just iron a, a square on bigger than my applique will be, and then I trim away the edges so that I know everything's covered when I put that on my applique. You could use either a heat and bond light. This is one that you can buy at most fabric stores. I also like the Sulky perfect applique. I have a really big roll of this one here. If you need bigger pieces, this is a good way to go. This is lighter and melts faster, but you just iron this stuff on. Um, by the way, do not use the heat and bond ultra hold. This is not meant to stitch over. It says no sew. You do not, it'll gunk up your needles. Don't use the red heat and bond. Use only the heat and bond light, which is in the purple package. Or just go for one that's made for this, like the Sulky Perfect Applique. Like I said, I like this product a lot, but these are easier and cheaper to find. And then after I've got it ironed on, you just hot iron with that. And I just like to cut out so that I know all of my fabric has that fusible on it. And then you want to peel off the paper. And yeah, it's not the easiest to peel off, but just peel that off. And now you've got a stiffened fabric. It's going to be easier to cut. You're going to be able to fuse it on to your um, backing fabric. It's just a much better technique to use this fusible on the back of your applique fabric. And then after you've peeled off the backing, do not forget to tear off the backing. That is a mistake that's easy to make, but don't always tear off that paper backing. 
and then just go ahead and lay your pieces over your placement outlines that your machine just stitched. Do not iron it yet. Some people like to use a basting spray. I don't like adhesive sprays. It gets my hoop gunked up. It's, it's too much trouble, so I don't use those. That's another reason why I like this sulky. It kind of, it sticks. But once you've got to this point, just get it on the machine and get it tacked down, and then they're not going to go anywhere. Tip number four, use the right scissors. This is probably the biggest problem that people actually have with applique is you're not using the right scissors. I know applique scissors are a little pricey, but they are worth it. As far as what scissors to use, let's chat. I'm going to try my dressmaker shears and I'm going to show you why this is not a great idea. Now having that fusible on the back makes the fabric much easier to cut and it also prevents fraying. So that's a good thing, but these scissors just don't get right up to the edge very well. I've still got a lot of fabric left over. You really want a good pair of applique scissors. I'm going to try these instead. Let's try it on this one. And you'll see, I'm trying to keep my hands away from the camera. These scissors can get a lot closer to the edge. Let's zoom in and show you. See how much closer I can get to my stitches with a pair of applique scissors instead of the regular shears here. Even if you had a small pair of scissors, you might think, I'll just use my tiny scissors. And by the way, you need to be rotating your hoop as you do that, and I'll talk about that. Even these small scissors, though, they just can't get as close. And the sharp point of my scissors is going to dig into my fabric and possibly cut the fabric underneath. So that's another reason why we should be using applique scissors. I have several pairs here. This one is a regular pair. You'll also notice applique scissors have this scoop down like this so that the, um, the, what's this called? The part where you put your fingers in, it's on top of the hoop. So you're not like, you know, contorting yourself. Um, and that's why they have that funny scoop shape like that. Um, another pair that I really like, these are really tiny ones, but if you're doing really detailed work, a big circle is easy to cut out, a uh, very detailed applique, you got to get into some nooks and crannies, and a little pair like this is very useful. So I'm going to show you, and again, as you're cutting, keep turning your hoop. You don't want to be contorting yourself and stuff. Just keep turning your hoop to make it convenient and easy for you. And again, they have these rounded corners on the tips so that they are not digging into the fabric. This is just so much easier and look how close I can get to that edge. Also look that my edge is not fraying because I used the heat and bond or the sulky perfect applique under there. So I'm going to get a really clean cut out circle on this. If you cut the stitches, and by the way this is another thing that I will mention on applique. Oop, that actually got cut in there when it shouldn't. You'll notice that on my, um, this is something that I digitized, and I like to use what's called a double zigzag for my tack down. Most digitizers will just use a single running stitch around like this. You'll see both. Um, the reason that I like this double zigzag is because just in case you cut one of these threads or something, you've still got a second stitch all the way around. So it goes around once in a zigzag, and then it goes around the other way. And it gives you a little bit more of a border for that satin stitch. You can see I missed a little spot here, and these little tiny scissors can actually kind of dig in and get to that. So this is cut really close to the edge with the little tiny applique scissors. I do have another pair here, and it's much less of a curve, but they're not really meant for applique. That's not why they made them. They will work, but they're not the best because they're just not um, as sharp as a, a good pair of applique scissors. They're really meant for trimming your threads. Um, trimming jump stitches and stuff. They're good for that. And let's see if with my good pair if I can even um, get this. Also what you want to do is pull up on your fabric as much as you can to make it taut and tight and get some tension on it so that you can cut really close to your edges. If you need tweezers or hemostats you can use that but usually that's not necessary. I think I'm really close to the edge here. And I'm running my scissors right up on the edge of the stitches. I'm pulling up on the fabric and then running my scissors, oops, I already cut that, right up to the edge. So you can see on the back side how my scissors are cutting right up to the edge there. 
And that's one of the tricks of getting a nice clean edge on your applique, is getting a nice clean cut. And that really comes down, it's not about you, it's about your, your tools. It's about having a good pair of applique scissors. Now that I've got these cut out, I can go ahead and use a mini iron to go ahead and fuse the applique piece onto the backing fabric. After you've cut out and fused with the hot iron these appliques onto your backing fabric, you're ready to go ahead and put it back on the machine and it's going to put a satin stitch all the way around each of the circles. And tip number five, if you are still having issues with your applique, consider that maybe you need to buy your designs from a different digitizer. Here are those sample circles that I stitched out during this test. And this is a two millimeter satin stitch here. You can see how thin that is. This is a three millimeter, four millimeter, and five millimeter. The thicker the satin stitch is, the more careless you can be when you're cutting out. If you see on this two millimeter one right here, I've actually got a little piece of fabric that I didn't cut close enough and it's got just a little gooby sticking out there because it did not get encased in the border. This two millimeter is really super thin. I did okay on the rest of it because I used really good scissors, so you can get away with a really thin two millimeter border, but it's, it's tricky. Three millimeter was much better, and you can see how I've got the clean lines. I've got one little piece hanging out there, which I could just trim that off. So this is pretty clean. This is a three millimeter, and that's about as thin as most digitizers would typically go. If you have something thinner than this, get from a different digitizer because that's really that's cutting it pretty close to like i said this a lot of people would have problems with this four is typically what you would see this is a more common width and then five or even wider some digitizers do these really wide borders because you don't have to be so careful with your your cutting if you don't have applique scissors something like a four or especially a five would be better but you can see how on the five you don't see anything sticking out because it's much easier to get everything cut around and it covers up all your mistakes okay that was it all of my tips and tricks on how to applique with your embroidery machine i hope i covered all of your questions maybe solved some of the problems that you're having yeah you're probably going to want to go and buy some some scissors wouldn't be surprised. I'll find the scissors that I showed and I'll link them down in the description box. And if you're still having issues, whether it's with applique or something else with your embroidery machine, I wanted to let you know about a new service that I have through a, a platform called Superpeer. You can schedule a one-on-one -on -one video chat with me. I'm offering right now, it's 15 minutes for $20. We can talk about whatever embroidery machine problem that you're having. I also have some services if you are doing like dollar puppet making, we can talk about that too that's a different service if you're buying an embroidery machine and you want someone like like me with an opinion on what might work best for you you can tell me your personal situation what's your budget what are you wanting to do with it and i can help you find a machine that works for you so i have all of those different services available on the platform called super peer i will link to that down in the description box too and if you want let's chat so that's all i got for this video hopefully it helped go do some applique make beautiful things and have a wonderful day Bye-bye.